Hi, it's Lerald, and I'm just gonna get right into it. I didn't write an intro for this video. I just ate a bunch of Oreos, so I'm kind of feeling a little bit jazzed here. GGG just dropped this patch yesterday with some pretty big changes to the game, and one of those was to the Divination Scarab of Plenty, and I wanted to kind of test out and see. Does this make it so that Divination card drops are significantly increased? And just to take a look at that Scarab in game, Divination Scarab of Plenty makes it so that the area will contain three additional packs of magic monsters that have 800% increased chance to drop divination cards. Now, this doesn't really sound all that great. I played around a bit with running five of these to see is there any sort of multiplicative effect like there is with divination scarabs of the cloister. There doesn't seem to be. Instead, it's just you can have 12 packs if you run four of these, 15 packs if you run five, and they are magic packs. So... I went ahead and included Scarabs of Monstrous Lineage in there to give me 40% increased magic pack size on 12 packs. That seems like it would be more than 15 packs without any of that bonus on pack size. So I've run 20 maps of this just to kind of figure out whether this is any good, feel it out, and kind of get a feeling on, on this. And I'm going to go through the stats on that and kind of the strategy I've run and then also break down sort of some of the things that people use, especially at a high farming level, to uh, tell whether their div card drop rates are right, lucky, unlucky, whatever. Oh, I never said like and subscribe. I guess do that at some point as well. Okay, so I'm calling this a good and plenty strategy, and this is more or less what my returns have looked like, just to jump right into them. About eight and a half to nine divines per hour. I think that's okay for such a low cost, low effort strategy. It really is just uh, boss rushing, red altars, very normal stuff. Pretty much the same kind of strategy I've been putting out on the channel for the last couple of weeks here, but just pared down to the absolute most basic possible thing it could be. And I don't feel as though I got any particularly special drops along the way. I got five fortress maps in the span of 20 maps. That's not really all that juicy. I got a Valdos puzzle box and a divine orb. And I think I got one grand Eldritch Ember uh, shrine. I think I actually got a couple of grand Eldritch Ember altars and I clicked the player reward on a couple of those instead. So I might have actually been able to make more if I had gone heavier into minion rewards. Maybe I would have made another divine's worth. It's fine. You'll see that this says 14. It's actually rounding down a bit because of the Scarred Meadow, which again, I'll get to in a second when I talk about Maps of Exile here. This is a worthless card. It's valued at one chaos each. It's not. It's zero chaos. It's worthless chaos. So I've actually put this in at about 13 and a half divines, which I have accommodated for the fact that if the divine price has gone up in the last couple of days here pretty significantly from about like 155 to 160 up into the like 175 to 190 range, depending on whether you're bartering with other people or just using the in-game currency exchange, which I don't know why you would ever not use the currency exchange, really. So obviously this isn't like an amazing strategy. You know, I've talked about like yesterday's video, crop rotation, you can make over 10 divines an hour, I think pretty consistently with this. These maps are a little faster since you're not stopping and really doing much. You are just clearing through guys and there are massive amounts of guys. Being able to have that 40% magic pack size and guarantee that there are 12 extra magic packs is pretty significant. So there are lots and lots and lots of guys, and I did find that I got a massive amount of gold in the hour, hour and change that I spent doing this, like hour and 10 minutes or so. I was pulling down over 600,000 gold an hour, and importantly, I wasn't doing this on my Barb, or Berserker rather, with the 185% rarity. I was doing this on a different character that only has about 116% rarity, so maybe this would have been closer to 39,000 gold with another 70% rarity, something like that per map. So this is very lucrative in terms of just simply killing guys. I did find it to be a pretty good XP strategy as well. I think this might actually be the XP strategy of the league. So this is the Atlas Passive Tree. Not really anything out of the ordinary at all. It's literally the strategy that I was using for non-ritual stacked deck farming. Point for point, exactly the same. I do think it's possible that using ritual with this strategy could be a good move just in the exact same way that it was for stack deck farming. You get the second chance on killing some of these guys that have spawned near the ritual, get another shot at getting some cards to drop from them. Now, as for card drops, just to look at my dump tab here, you know, I have tons of this scarred meta, which I'm kind of using as my indicator card. And then I got eight fortunate cards, which really doesn't seem like it's not that great. In the span of 20 maps, I only get eight fortunate cards. I don't feel that I'm getting a massive amount of divination cards. In the past, in previous leagues, especially before the 
Scarab rework, I would get multiple fortunate cards per map in a lot of div card farming strategies, especially on Mesa. So it does feel as though div card farming is way, way down from what it was in the past. And obviously you can see the bulk of the, the currency that I've made in this tab is not from div cards. Div cards aren't even a top three return here. And that div card value is heavily inflated by this scarred meadow, which is complete BS. This is worthless. This is, this is zero here. It's really only about one divine's worth of divination cards in the form of those eight fortunate cards which for what it's worth, I guess are a little bit undervalued. You know, eight fortunate cards is listed as 1.1 divines. That's not quite correct. 12 divided by two, you know, six, six cards to a divine. So should be 1.3 divines is what that should be at roughly. So that's a little bit of an undervalue there, I suppose. I, I'm not worried about it, it's fine. All right, before I move on, here's a picture of Good and Plenty uh, for people outside of the U.S. This is the worst candy in America. It is candy coated licorice, and the only claim that it has is that it is allegedly the oldest candy in America. It is for grandmas. All right, now let's move on to Maps of Exile. And this is a really useful website that people like to use for kind of figuring out what map they want to run, especially if they're farming a particular div card or they're trying to just maximize their, like, chaos per map from div cards essentially it gives you all of these little inputs here that you can use to value the layout of the map or the base mob density or the difficulty annoyance of the boss but the main thing that people tend to focus on is the value of the cards and there's a really really powerful tool that high level juicers use in this little drop down here as a way of measuring what the amount of div cards they should expect to get per map or the amount of maps per div card, really. For things like Fire of Unknown Origin or the Apothecary, it would be the amount of maps per div card. So what you will do is you will turn on a div card in your loot filter that has a very high drop chance relative to the card that you're trying to farm. So in this case, I have scribed Mesa onto Dunes, and I am also running all of these Dunes maps as Corrupted 8 mod maps. That doesn't affect what cards will show up, but it does mean you're gonna get more of them. And so I turned on the Scarred Meadow and the Fox. And we can look at the weight here, the, the weight for Wake of Destruction, or uh, the Scarred Meadow rather, is 17,817, and the weight for Fortunate is 1192. So just to kind of divide those out here, 17,817 divided by 1192, it's roughly, I mean, 14.94 times more common, but roughly 15 times more common. And so if we look at our spreadsheet here, I got 124 Scarred Meadows and eight Fortunates. So 124 divided by eight is about 15 times more common. So maybe I got slightly unlucky with Fortunate cards, but I really think that these numbers are, are right about like on the money, more or less. They're pretty much right on. Now we could also use the fox as kind of a measurement. The weight on the fox is lower, it's 2308, so not even quite double that of the fortunate, 2308 divided by 1192. Uh, you know, it's within the range of being double the, the weight of the fortunate. And you'll see that I got 10 fox cards and eight fortunates. So I think I might've forgotten to pick up a couple of fox cards. Like I saw them in my mind, just went no and just filtered them out. But even so, Maybe the Fox drops were a little unlucky. Maybe the Fortunate drops were a little lucky. I'm not sure. I don't think so. I think this all pretty much lines up just fine. The Scarred Meadow and the Fortunate really are kind of the more reliable metrics for comparing to each other. The Fox is just kind of there as a sanity check, and maybe I am insane, but, you know, that's fine. Ultimately, the thing that we're really looking for is Fortunate and Scarred Meadow, kind of as our metric for, I mean, basically, is this, is this, uh, good or is this number correct and so then what we can do is we can put in here we can use this drop down menu to kind of measure out and so we'll go scarred meadow and then we will set our weight to what do we have 124 divided by 20 so like 6.2 so we could say six and then we can use this to filter by cards and essentially filter out if we're using this strategy and we have roughly the same gear roughly the same amount of well, we're going to have the same amount of item quantity on our gear and that we're going to have none, but the same level of eight mod maps, the same level of rarity on our gear, all of that. And we're hitting roughly the same number of 
uh, Eldritch Altars, which good luck with that. We can then use this to measure out the amount of chaos that we can expect to make on average per map from div card drops. And that's in this little column here. You can see as we mouse over, we can expect to see about one fire of unknown origin every 213 maps using this strategy. So roughly 27 chaos per map from fires of unknown origin, uh, one apothecary every 495 maps, one divine beauty every eight maps. That's actually not too bad. One brother's gift every 81 maps. That is pretty rough. That's that's pretty high. Yeah, one un unrequited love every 248 maps. One fortunate every three maps, I think, is about consistent with what we had. You know, we ran 20, 20 maps and we got eight fortunate. So eight divided by 20 is 0.4. That's about one every two and a half maps. With some of the div card duplication alters that happened along the way, I think that maybe skews things a little bit in our favor, pushes it from around that range of three closer to the two and a half that we wound up with. Basically, I think I got lucky and I got a, a duplicated div card at some point, and if I hadn't, it would have been more like seven divided by 20, in which case that would be right in that three, three maps for every fortunate card range. So ultimately, do I think this is a good strategy? Not really. I don't think it's an amazing currency making strategy, but I do think it's super simple and it's definitely good for XP and gold. I did find that I got an insane amount of gold from this. You know, you compare this to all the other strategies that I've done so far and the gold per hour from this absolutely annihilated everything else. And I was very happy with that. I definitely killed more guys doing this strategy than I have with any other strategy. It was also quite a bit faster. Some of that is the build, playing a different character, moving a little faster. This was a strategy that gave me tons of guys to chew through in my maps. So I appreciated that. It's not the most profitable strategy per hour by any means. Although I was farming the fortunate card instead of some more valuable card like fire of unknown origin. So if you were to do that strategy, do this strategy while farming a more valuable div card and do it over a long period of time until you finally got the card a couple of times, maybe this would wind up being a little bit more profitable per hour. As it currently stands, I don't love it. I think it's fine. It's a very simple farm strategy. The gameplay loop is fun. And so I think that's definitely a positive to it. I also think that the amount of guys that I killed, the amount of gold that I made per hour was very satisfying. So that aspect of it was pretty cool. The only thing that I didn't really care for was the little guys that, that there's like these evil purple books that when you kill the monsters that are spawned by these scarabs, they will stay behind and fire what appear to be chaos damage balls at you. So if you're playing a chaos inoculation build that then this is a great strategy i think you know you could pretty much nullify that whole mechanic but as somebody who's both not playing a chaos inoculation build and not chaos res capped it wasn't so great for me uh, i didn't really love it now for what it's worth looking back at some of the footage i don't know 100 percent for certain if that is chaos damage it might be lightning damage maybe you know some combination of different things it's poe so it's probably a combination of different types but it definitely hit pretty hard, so I didn't love that aspect of it. I definitely don't like any sort of thing that does a bunch of damage and is an enemy, but you can't target and kill it. That's just like a gameplay loop that I don't care for. But the rest of the gameplay loop of this farm strategy was very fun. Because, you know, it's just killing guys. So in conclusion, the Scarab was redesigned and it is still fine. It's not great. It's not terrible. I think that if you were to scry a very valuable div card onto a map layout that you like and you just want a super simple strategy where you farm and farm and farm for a good div card like Fire of Unknown Origin or the Apothecary, basically the Nemesis or Mage Blood div cards, and you wanted to just grind maps for a long time mindlessly, slamming through guys, making tons of gold, getting a lot of XP and maybe getting some valuable stuff along the way, this strategy could be pretty good, but if you're really trying to min-max your currency per hour, I don't think this is it. I think there's maybe a possibility of combining some delirium orbs into this strategy that could be good, doing sort of a combination of different things, and then these guys don't really add so much in the way of div cards as they do just a bunch of extra guys to kill, a bunch of extra juice in that way, and maybe that could be useful. Alright, I think that's it. 
I think this was a fun gameplay loop. I just didn't necessarily think it was like super profitable, but it was very simple and I like that aspect of it. I do like the gameplay loop of just churning through tons and tons and tons of dudes. So, you know, maybe there is something there that I just haven't quite cracked the code on. Maybe it is ritual. I don't know. Either way, thanks for watching. Bye.